because of the the actual uh, you know kind of lock that sits on the cells inside of our respiratory tract. So when we think about this idea of a virus, a virus basically has a key that fits very specifically into into the locks that are on the doors of the cells that get into our respiratory tract and get into our lungs. We think, at least for this virus, that in kids there's a lower number of those locks and those doorknobs for the virus to be able to attach to. Um, of course, you have to think about this in regards to the variants. And if you see something that is able to attach better or has a better key for the lock, then maybe that starts to take away a little bit some of those differences. Um, but certainly that's why we we think predominantly we're seeing lower infection rates in kids. It's just they don't get um, as much virus that, that's able to enter their cells as what adults do. Where, where are we in regards to being able to look at, at younger kids and vaccination? So th this has been something that listen, we, we want to be as uh, positive as, as possible, that we do not see adverse events in, in kids. So currently right now, um, Pfizer and Moderna have both been enrolling kids uh, from basically six months and up, uh, up to the year, you know, 12, eight, uh, 12 years of age, to basically look specifically uh, at both safety as well as immune responses with, with these vaccines. So we should get some data, hopefully within the, the next few weeks, the next couple of months from those two vaccines. And then we will see uh, likely the other vaccines that are moving through and continue to move through the approval or the clinical trial process also move out to kids. So I, you know, the likelihood is that probably by fall time, we will see younger kids getting, uh, getting vaccinated. Um, but certainly we have to have all that data back first before we move in that direction. One of the things we have to be very concerned about is what is this going to look like in the fall time? Certainly the Delta variant has, you know, thrown yet another, uh, you know, bit of a, a loophole at us with something that's more transmissible than the last more transmissible variant. Um, we need to do everything we can, I think, from a mitigation standpoint of being able to curb spread. So we know that there, you know, the likelihood is that kids under the age of 12 are not going to be fully vaccinated by that point. The vaccines will hopefully, you know, be starting by, by then, depending on what the data says. But we have mechanisms to suppress transmission. The biggest part is getting people in our communities immunized that are eligible to be vaccinated. Those people that are immunized are going to suppress transmission um, without having to do uh, you know much else aside from rolling up their sleeves. That's really important. Then we start looking at some of the factors in schools as far as ventilation and separation, and, and certainly we're self-reporting when people are sick. All of those things will will also be able to be um, you know kind of compounding. Uh, the you know the the potential benefit of reducing transmission, but but the best thing we can do is get vaccinated to protect those around us that simply cannot be vaccinated at this time.